Metro Vancouver is constructing a new water supply main under the Fraser River, downstream of the new Portman Bridge. The water main will be constructed in a 3.5 meter diameter tunnel deep underneath the riverbed. A specialized tunnel boring machine, or TBM, digs the tunnel and also assembles the concrete tunnel liner protecting the steel inner pipe. Once complete, the water main will carry clean drinking water from the Seymour Capilano Water Filtration Facility to communities south of the Fraser River. The TBM started its journey on the south side of the river in Surrey and is now headed to Maccabeek Park in Coquitlam on the north side of the Fraser River. As the tunnel boring machine works its way under the Fraser, crews at the north side job site prepare for its arrival with the construction of a vertical shaft connecting the north end of the tunnel to the surface. The, the purpose of this shaft is the retrieval shaft for the TBM. So the tunnel boring machine is launched from the south shaft on the other side of the Fraser River. So once the TBM breaks through on this side, the, the TBM equipment is hoisted out of this shaft. The first step was excavating for the shaft. To begin, we had to install slurry walls, which provides temporary shoring support until you can get concrete in these panels. And you do that until you have a full circle, and then you excavate out the middle of the shaft using a clamshell bucket and a crane and then you can build the permanent lining inside of that. With the slurry walls built and the shaft excavated, crews are now constructing the permanent liner for the north shaft. The slurry walls are 81 meters deep. The shaft itself, which goes to the top of the tremie slab, which is the plug at the base of the shaft, that is 63 meters deep. Uh, the inside diameter after the permanent lining has been placed is five meters. The cages are lowered into the shaft where they are encased in a special concrete mixture. Because the concrete is so strong and the walls are so thick, we have to cool the concrete with uh, water cooling pipes just to keep the heat of hydration down and prevent the concrete from cracking. So the rebar cages are assembled on the surface and then the cages are lowered into the shaft and then the concrete is poured. A large hopper transports the concrete down the shaft to the work area where crews pour the concrete through an opening in the form. To protect the shaft during seismic events, a layer of high-tech plastic fabric provides separation between the slurry walls and the concrete shaft. Well, this shaft is quite unique in the sense that uh, because it's so deep, uh, the behavior of this shaft under a seismic event is much different than the shaft on the other side of the river. So we actually had to isolate. Uh, the design requires that isolation layer between the slurry walls and the permanent lining. So that gray fabric you saw, it's called UHMW, which is ultra high molecular weight. Essentially, it's a plastic and it provides a slippery separation layer between the slurry walls and the permanent lining. You do not want the slurry wall to grab on to the permanent lining because it increases the seismic loading on the, on the permanent lining structure. The north shaft will also serve a purpose once the TBM is removed from the tunnel. So once the TBM breaks through on this side, the, the TBM equipment is hoisted out of this shaft and then essentially what happens after that is uh, there's a valve chamber constructed on the surface and it controls the flow from the Coquitlam water to the other side of the river. The scheduled completion date for the Portman Tunnel is late 2015.